I guess that's a supplement because normally I inject it before going to the gym an hour beforehand, but What's up guys, Derek, morepolicemoreleads.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about all of the health supplements that I currently use. So I made a video, I don't know, probably like three years ago at this point, talking about all of these supplements I thought were actually worth spending money on as far as health supplements go. And, um, you know, expectedly, mine changed dramatically over, even, <laughs> even in the course of a few weeks, I might add something in, take something out, add something in, take something out. So while it's probably similar to what it was prior, there are new additions and new things that have been taken out. And as far as what I think is worth spending money on, a lot of people wanna know, what do I think is useful for cardiovascular disease prevention, um, anti-inflammation, you know, per potentially cancer prevention, etc. That kind of stuff is stuff I'm willing to spend money on if I think it is efficacious for what I am spending fucking, you know, like $50 plus on a bottle for. Because this stuff doesn't really have, a lot of it does not have any like performance outcomes. It's more like proactive precautionary measures to make sure you don't get to a disease state essentially. So it's not like you're actually... You know, it can be difficult for some people to justify throwing money at this shit because you're spending hundreds of dollars a month. You literally will end up spending more on health supplements <laughs> than you do on like gear or anything related to bodybuilding unless you're using copious amounts of GH. If this is like, if you're using performance enhancing drugs. So anyways, as far as what I use, I'm not going to say why I use everything I use. I might do a separate breakdown video for each thing at some point in the future but this would be like a fucking five hour video if i broke down every single one and explained why so i'm just gonna kind of like list through them and um touch on a couple of points so i actually have a i had to take a picture of it because there's so f <laughs> there's so many bottles like i couldn't even fit it on my work desk here to uh like pull them up and show you so i have this uh this image and uh, a couple of them actually, I'm gonna go through them and kind of like remember as I go with what I wake up and take. So let's see, the first thing is I do take a multivitamin. Right now I am taking the Thorn, um, what is it? Multivitamin Elite AM and PM formula. And this is something I um, hope to have with Gorilla Mind in the near future is having our own multivitamin so I don't have to buy this one anymore. But this is the one that I am currently using and uh, highly recommend. It has all of the, uh, you know, like chelated versions of the, uh, the most bioavailable and high quality versions of the uh, minerals, micronutrients, etc. It has uh, methylfolate instead of folic acid. It has uh, bisglycinate instead of the like shitty non-bioavailable formats of certain things. Like it's pretty much like the most stacked and research backed multivitamin I've come across to date. And um, it factors in even like obscure things like, you know, like genetic polymorphisms and stuff that would otherwise, most companies are not looking at that shit. So this is a very good product in my opinion for a multivitamin and until I can get it replaced with Gorilla Mind, they're gonna be using it. So I have the AM and PM formula. Um, I used to have vitamin D separately. Now I don't because in the AM and PM formula, I get enough vitamin D as well as through my vitamin K2 and D3 supplements. So I also take um, the Jero's formulas, k Right, vitamin K2 and D3 soft gels, and those have a, another you know bit of vitamin D in it. So I get it through the, um, mostly through the AM multi, a little bit in the PM, but not as much, and then a big hit as well in the K2 D3 supplement. So that in totality is enough for me to have what I consider to be good vitamin D levels on a blood test. So um, I don't supplement with it separately anymore, but you might need to, depending on your own blood work. Um, what else? I have, uh, typically I'll also take Gorilla Mind Smooth when I wake up, you know, I'll cycle off of it once in a while, but typically I'll take six capsules of Gorilla Mind Smooth within uh, 30 minutes of waking up. Sometimes I'll have coffee with it, sometimes I won't. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of my go-to nootropic um stack that i use on a pretty regular basis what else i also take a ta -ta 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 taurine a couple times a day um potent antioxidant and um apparently has some therapeutic promise for preserving um testicular health even when you're using exogenous anabolics which is uh 
notable and uh, just it has a lot of good data backing it. So it's uh, and it's cheap, it's something I wanted to throw in. So I've been using it. Um, I also take a vitamin C supplement separately. Um, do I need to? Yeah, I don't know, to be honest, but I'm being uh, uber careful. So I do that. Um, let's see what else do I have in here? I'm probably not going to mention some of the pharmaceuticals I take for like hair loss and stuff because I've already done a video on that and they're not really supplements. So I'm not going to say like, oh, I popped this and this and that because I've already done a video on that and it's not really supplements. As far as like things that are health related though, I will mention the pharmaceuticals. So I take 40 milligrams of Telmasartan per day right now, which is an ARB, which if you are a bodybuilder who is concerned about cardiovascular health in any capacity, I highly recommend you check out some of my older videos on um, angiotensin receptor blockers and what kind of uh, therapeutic promise they may have in your protocol for uh, being proactive about preventing uh, negative outcomes to your uh, heart, to be honest. It's uh, something that I think is very overlooked in the community right now. Um, what else? I also take metformin twice a day. I take 500 milligrams of XR twice a day. Um, that's a health supplement, I guess. Like it's a drug obviously, but I mean like it's in the, I use it for health, not for like hair or some shit. So that's why, that's why I'm mentioning it right now. Um, what else do I take? Sometimes I take I have a glucose disposal agent that I made through Gorilla Mind, and prior to that, I just use berberine. If I'm having like a carb heavy day where I'm not really exercising or I'm having a cheat day, I will deploy, I would have used berberine a lot as well as my metformin. But now I use my glucose disposal agent, which has berberine complex with hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin for improved bioavailability, as well as a myriad of other um agents that are useful and i'll probably do a breakdown video on that separately so i won't bore you with the details here but i use that as a gda sometimes um intermittently though um what else um oh i also take carnitine which um i guess that's a supplement because normally i inject it before going to the gym an hour beforehand but if i am in a rush and don't have time or just don't want to because sometimes pinning a milliliter of carnitine is fucking annoying. I will use the Gorilla Mode um, AR capsules, which are basically the name for our carnitine supplement I made, which um, AR standing for AR upregulation essentially, because that's the whole reason I use it. I'll pop the capsules intermittently, but I try to inject it. And the reason being is the capsules will, when going through the digestive tract, produce something called TMAO in the gut, which is unfortunately something that is um, implied to be carcinogenic. So this is something you don't want to, uh, and this is kind of ties back to the whole, you know, red meat is cancer causing, blah, blah, blah. This is sort of like the basis of their argument and whether this is true or not, I don't want to find out, you know? So for me, unless I'm like, if I'm really in a time crunch, I will use the capsules, but because you can't actually get the same effect, even though the bioavailability sucks. I used to think it was totally useless to use oral L-carnitine, but I realized you just need to use enough of it and then it's you can get the same equivalent effect as long as you mega dose it. So I would literally use like four grams of the shit orally um, if I didn't feel like injecting that day. But most of the time I try to pin it when I do use it. What else? Um, as far as where I get my injectable carnitine is through my HRT clinic, by the way. So. There's no other place you're gonna get 500 milligram per milliliter carnitine unless you brew it yourself at home or you get a prescription for it from a compounding pharmacy like you would get access to through my HRT clinics. If you're interested in that, uh, link's in the description below for my HRT clinic. Um, I also take 500 to 1,000 milligrams of curcumin per day. Um, I use the fortunate, like I'm actually trying to basically get to a point where every single thing I spend money on, I can get through Gorilla Mind so then I don't have to spend money on it anymore. And because I figure anybody who watches my stuff is probably going to be on the same page with what they think is worthy to spend money on. Cause like presumably if you're subscribed to my channel, you value my opinion enough to probably buy the same shit I value and spend my money on. So I've been like slowly phasing in the health supplements into Gorilla Mind. So right now we have uh, the curcumin, astragalus extract, and citrus bergamot. So the uh, curcumin 
It's a, a complex that has biopurine in it for increased bioavailability. The reason we chose this complex, or I chose it specifically, first off, the majority of the clinical data reinforces the efficacy of this combination specifically. There's way more studies backing this combination than any other format of curcumin. And above and beyond that, when you compare formats of, um, like there's a, I'm actually not gonna put, I'm not gonna say the other trademarked versions because I don't really wanna put other companies on blast right now, but I'll make a separate video addressing it. And I have this like big elaborate chart that breaks down each format of curcumin and how they're sold and why you would want the format that we have in our product. And um, I'll just leave it at that for now. If you wanna dig into it further, you can, but I'll make a dedicated video at some point soon on why, what type of curcumin you want and why. Um, for maximizing the bioavailability and the efficacy of the product. But um, yeah, so I used 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams of now Gorilla Mind curcumin. I used to use the uh, Doctor's Best stuff, but I basically just like cloned it with Gorilla Mind. So now we have that with the exact same potency. Um, and I can get it through there, which is great. So becoming the one-stop shop. And as far as what curcumin does, it's kind of like, I, I highly recommend you go look into the literature supporting its efficacy, but a lot of it is um, um, anti-inflammation, cancer related. I'm not gonna say any like scientific claims about what it may or may not do, but it's very, the research is very positive, reinforcing what it can potentially support in those contexts <laughs> is what I will leave it at. Um, as far as astragalus extract, that is another product that I have um, gotten phased into Gorilla Mind, so I don't have to go buy it from Now Foods anymore, which is awesome. So, and I actually fit more into a capsule than they have in their capsules. I used to pop these 500 milligram ones that they have. We have 750 milligrams in each capsule we have. And um, I will take four to five grams per day. So back when I took the uh, 500 milligram ones from Now, I used to take like eight to 10 capsules a day. Now with Gorilla Mind, I take like six. So that is, um, let's see, we have 750 milligrams per capsule. So we're having 1500 times three. So yeah, I'm having like 4,500 milligrams from the Gorilla Mind ones. Sometimes I don't even remember. I take so much fucking shit to be honest. But yeah, I take 4,500 milligrams of Gorilla Mind at least right at this moment. Um, and the reason being it is the only, it's like one of the only kidney support supplements that seems to actually produce like significant improvements in uh health parameters so looking at like your uh glomerular filtration rate looking at that as well as um other kidney metrics it is one of the only supplements that can actually dramatically improve them and then above and beyond that um it has some really interesting data in an anti-aging context now i don't know if it actually does this but through its ability to activate telomerase activity in human t-cells it seems to have uh, a lot of promise in the anti-aging realm and there's actually this supplement that used to be sold actually it's probably still sold on amazon called like ta65 or something like that and this was like a super hyped up anti-aging supplement that at the time a bunch of people thought was uh you know like the key to living <laughs> living forever or like uh you know staying youthful forever and like not getting disease and whatnot and they had like this proprietary blend in the product and it was uh based on this premise of uh um, activating telomerase activity because the thought process is is like your telomeres they get shorter and shorter and shorter and eventually once they can't get shorter anymore you're basically like at the end of the line in terms of your uh, um, lifespan I guess like at the end of the day this is sort of the one of the theories that is uh, you know very loosely supported it's obviously not exactly how everything goes down probably but the telomerase thing a lot of longevity research seem to researchers seem to theorize was a big role in terms of how quickly you're going to age and kind of just like fall apart so if you could keep your telomeres intact with things like astragalus extract then perhaps you could uh, live longer and or stave off disease for much longer and this ta65 stuff it was like revolutionary back in the day because it was the first thing that was uh as far as i know it had like clinical data supporting that it was uh um, potent at activating telomerase activity and a lot of people bought into the hype and they were selling the supplement for like fucking like $600 or something per bottle and people are buying it. I think people still buy it actually and somehow Amazon has like has like a four star review average on Amazon which is just baffling because Amazon reviewers just baffle me.
it's like the one place where like gorilla mode will do worse in a review because somebody was mad that it didn't mix well because it was like too potent or like some fucking shit like that or they're like addicted to dmaa and it's like not strong enough for them or something and then somehow a shitty pre-workout will get like five stars that is uh you know because it costs like 27 dollars or something even though it's weak as fuck the amazon reviewers basically i'm skeptical of their uh their grasp of certain scientific literature or even the fact that like i just don't think they fucking know anything to be honest in some cases so i don't know how that product you know it, se it seems like it's probably just placebo in terms of the reviews but they found out that that ta65 the main component of it and the reason why it was uh like what it actually had in it in this proprietary blend was mainly the astragalus root extract so you could actually get this stuff yourself very cheap and make your own supplement which was you know for all intents and purposes the exact same thing except it wouldn't have like the brand name on it so that's basically what this is it's like a actually reasonably priced version of that like crazy hyped up anti-aging supplement so i had been taking this for a while and i've been taking it uh it's one of the things i want to get through gorilla mind as soon as possible and now we have it so i take uh six of them per day through the gorilla mind by the way these are all on the site if you want to check them out uh, and you can expect that a lot of these that i'm mentioning will eventually be on the site it's just right now we only have so many we phased in but the goal is eventually to have like a whole arsenal of every single thing i think has uh is worth spending money on that i otherwise already spent my money on um next thing citrus bergamot so this is something i've been taking forever to be honest it's like uh one of the very few supplements over the counter that can actually have a very significantly positive impact on your lipids. And that's not just like improving your LDL, it's also improving your HDL, which is something that is traditionally, you'll see in guys on gear, even guys on TRT, it's very, very common to see low HDL. And even if you have, you know, in the therapeutic reference range, guys on exogenous TRT um, injecting it, typically, sometimes lipid parameters seem to look a bit better in guys using creams than injections but um you know most guys are using injections and usually you'll see in their blood work you know if they're lucky they'll have like a 40 to 50 plus um whereas a guy who's natty and is super healthy is going to be like fucking 70 80 plus having uh you know like an hdl in the 30s forever is not something i was interested in so citrus bergamot actually helps keep me like right <laughs> It's not good, but it's better than it would be otherwise by a very significant amount, or at least significant enough where it's like an extra like 10 on your um, HDL might not seem like a lot, but when you think about like, that's like 25% of what you currently have, like that's a fucking lot. So for me, I've been using this for years. Um, I used to use the uh, Gero formula stuff. Um, and basically in layman's terms, what it does, I use 1500 milligrams a day. I don't know if I mentioned that. So I use, I split it up throughout the day. Um, I use one capsule, um, three times a day. And basically it's going to help increase your HDL, and lower your LDL. That's basically the end, like without getting into more elaborate detail than how it impacts your other, um, parameters in your lipid profile. That's basically like the end goal of it at a very basic level. So for me, that's why I take it. I take 1500 milligrams a day. I would recommend at least taking a thousand um, if you're going to use it. And we now sell that through Gorilla Mine as well. And I've been using this honestly for, even if you go back to the like conception of my channel, like I've probably been talking about citrus bergamot and um, curcumin for like fucking ever. And most of these, most of these supplements like K2, D3, uh, vitamin D, all that kind of stuff is stuff I've been uh, preaching for a while now. So how many fucking bottles of this shit have I bought at this point? It's probably insane. Um, next thing, ubiquinol. Um, this is one of the best cardiovascular support supplements, bar none. And I recommend you get ubiquinol, not CoQ10. Reason being is as you get older, you have a harder time converting CoQ10 to ubiquinol. And you might as well just get the end stage form to begin with. And so you don't have to worry about it, in my opinion. So ubiquinol is what I use and what I have been using for years. I use um, 200 milligrams a day, but I uh, would recommend if you're exposing yourself to super physiological dosages of androgens or you otherwise are, I don't know, more genetically prone to cardiovascular disease or whatever, I would recommend 400 milligrams a day. It's an expensive supplement, but it's one of the most um, useful ones in my arsenal and I highly recommend it. Um, there was actually a story like way back in the day that stuck with me for a long time about PJ Braun where he mentioned 
he had like, he knew a guy who had heart failure and he was on like a heart transplant list. And the guy figured he like, he was fucked. So he basically decided to do a mega dose ubiquinol experiment just for the hell of it. Cause he had like, what else was he gonna do? Um, and apparently he was like, I think he was like way down on the list. So it was like pretty much guaranteed he was gonna die. Um, if he didn't get this transplant soon, it didn't seem like it was going to come up anytime soon. So, so what he did is he took like, I think it was like 800 to 1000 milligram, milligrams of ubiquinol per day or something insane, which is insanely expensive. But you know, when you're in that position, what else are you going to do? And according to PJ, at least if I recall correctly, the guy got his heart improved so much that he was taken off of the transplant list and he no longer needed one, or at least he didn't need one urgently at that time anymore. So it had a very like a fucking amazing impact on him at that dosage. So for me, I use it as like a preventative measure at 200 and ideally I would use 400 and I will probably use 400 forever once I can get it through Gorilla Mind and I don't have to spend the amount I, cur <laughs> I currently spend on it. Um, what else do I use? I use uh, Gorilla Dream before going to bed also, which is... Um, Basically for a lot of the uh, herbal components of it that can enhance relaxation, enhance uh, sleep metrics, and um, the melatonin too. Like the way we have uh, formatted it now on the most recent batch is going to be a split between instant release melatonin and sustained release. So one of the problems with sleep aids in the supplement industry is they'll have immediate release melatonin or they'll have sustained release. And the way they kind of like get metabolized in your system, they cause you either to like wake up in the middle of the night or you'll be like groggy in the morning. So the answer that I've found as far as the best way to approach these supplements and formulating them is have a mix of both. So that is what I did for Gorilla Dream moving forward and is uh, why I take it now personally. So um, we also have a liposomal melatonin, which will be something that's just like, um, I might split it up in the future. Right now, it is just instant release, but um, it's more so to supplement on top of the Gorilla Dream if you need it so that you don't have to mega dose all the other shit in Gorilla Dream if you want a higher dose of melatonin. Um, but in the future, I might tweak that. I don't know. That's uh, I use that sometimes if I like really fucked up my circadian rhythm and need to get back on track. But typically as like a maintenance dose of melatonin, which... I feel like most people can probably justify based on the fact that nobody is actually like avoiding blue light and actually <laughs> getting proper melatonin secretion properly at nighttime, I would presume. So like the maintenance dose for me is like just the amount in a full serving of Gorilla Dream. But if I want to use more on top of that, I will use more on top of that occasionally. Um, what else? I also take, uh, oh, this is here right now. So I have this betaine, HCL and pepsin supplement that I sometimes take if I had coffee that day or something that might decrease the amount of um, hydrochloric acid that I would otherwise produce, which may cause, you know, proteins in the stomach to not get digested as easily, which can cause um, a myriad of issues. And this is sort of when you get into the audio, autoimmune stuff, you'll often find that some of these people are just not producing enough. They don't have an, enough of an acidic environment to even break down the shit that's there. And then they have like fermenting of stuff sitting in their stomach. And then it causes a bunch of fucking autoimmune problems for them. Um, and this is something a lot of people I think should look into, especially people who are, uh, if you have anything autoimmune related, definitely look into your gut health because this is something that often goes severely overlooked. But for me, this is something I use too. Like the betaine is uh, something I use for my... Um, I'm homozygous C67T MTHFR, which is like a, um, essentially I need more methyl donors than the next guy. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically <laughs> I've done a few videos on these about why I use creatine, why I use betaine, why I use, um, alpha GPC. And a lot of these are in the supplements, which is kind of, it's not why I put them in, but it's just a fringe benefit for me that I have this massive dose of betaine as an osmolate in our pre-workouts. I have the fat dose of alpha GPC in my nootropics. I have this in case I need it for uh, digestion purposes. Um, a lot of this stuff is uh, stuff that, it's kind of like two birds, one stone for me because I have uh, um, the MTHFR thing that needs support for methylation. And then I have, uh, some of the stuff is just effective supplements too. So I'm trying to think of what else I have Oh, I also have a cortisol blocker that I use through Gorilla Mind sometimes, very infrequently though, especially if you're on anabolics, the likelihood that you're going to need to block cortisol is probably low, um, especially if you're on like a super physiological amount and you have like antagonism of glucocorticoid receptors with other anabolics you're using and whatnot. 
Um, it's more so, it's helpful for naturals, especially women I find, but sometimes I will use it if I'm like really stressed out or um, it seems to actually help with fat loss to some extent, but I don't make a habit of it. It's something I use like intermittently once in a while. Um, I'll probably do a video separately on that product as well, but um, that's not like a regular supplement or anything like that. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I use? Um, as if that wasn't a lot. Oh, I use um, progesterone right now, actually. Before bed, I use, uh, I use um, right now, I just started with eight milligrams before bed. I'm titrating up. Um, reason being is uh, when you're on exogenous TRT, you're not going to have as much progesterone as you would otherwise have, and then you lose some of the neurosteroid cascades that you may otherwise need in order to get adequate GABAergic signaling and whatnot, and um, this can have a deleterious impact in terms of your neurology and whatnot, and especially if you're somebody who's using a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, and you are, you know, crushing your allopregnenolone synthesis and stuff like this, you may otherwise benefit significantly from progesterone supplementation. I do not recommend this if you're natural though, because this has negative feedback with your HPTA that will actually downregulate androgen production. So you can't just use progesterone if you're a natural and expect to get like all these uh, neuro steroid benefits and stuff, because presumably you shouldn't have them to begin with if you're natural. This is for a guy on TRT who otherwise has a downregulated HPTA. So just keep that in mind. I'm just saying what I'm doing, I'm not saying to do it. I knew I would forget something, so I also take <laughs> I also take a thousand milligrams of N-acetylcysteine every single day. So um, N-acetylcysteine instead of glutathione, even though oral glutathione seems to actually work, despite a lot of claims online that seem to think that it's not orally bioavailable, it does not seem to be the case for me and others who have tested it. It still has the same effects, literally whitens your skin. So if it's doing that to the same extent as an injectable, you can actually, it's pretty fucking obvious it's doing what it's supposed to do. So I used to inject the glutathione though, but um, I don't know. There's a lot of clinical data supporting that N-acetyl L-cysteine is as good or better for actual like efficacy measures in terms of um, trying to get a, you know, clinical endpoint and trying to achieve some sort of therapeutic benefit. So for me, N-acetyl L-cysteine is a lot easier than, uh, injecting glutathione. And even if I use it orally, I don't know why lately it's just been making me super lethargic. So I'm going to stick with NAC for now, even though it is just a precursor after all to the thing that is potentially making me lethargic. I don't know, but, um, I'm also using NAC right now. And, um, if I remember anything else, then I will probably add another part to this. But if the video cuts off now, you know that is the last thing I'm using. Anyways, if you want to uh, check out that stuff, um, I don't even know if I'm going to put the links down because that's going to be a very time-consuming process. But a lot of the stuff you can get on iHerb, Amazon, and um, at least some of the health supplements. By the time you see this video, who knows what we're going to have on Gorilla Mind. We might have a lot of this stuff there. So... Um, at least right now we have the astragalus, we have the citrus bergamot and we have the curcumin and those are all things I highly recommend for anybody in uh, this community who otherwise cares about the same stuff I care about. I think you would benefit from all three of them potentially more so the curcumin and the citrus bergamot though. The astrid, astragalus or astragalus, however you want to pronounce it, is a bit more um, iffy. But um, for me, I deem it worth spending money on. I've been doing it for years and um, I recommend it for you too if you want to go like full board in terms of your uh, health. So anyways, check that out. If that interests you, you want to support the channel, it's all going to be at gorillamind.com. Then anything else is uh, at your, you know, friendly neighborhood, uh, amazon.com or iHerb. So <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.